Hi guys, my name's Kimberly Russell from Kimberly Russell Art. If you don't know me, um, I am a pet portrait and wildlife artist based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I've been drawing for about 17 years. I'm self-taught. I'm primarily a pastel artist, um, but I work in coloured pencils and I also do a bit of acrylic. I um, started oils recently. I, I even do sculpting. Um, anything, any medium basically. <laughs> but I'm best known for my pastel work. Um, if you haven't already, uh, you can check my stuff out on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, they're my three major platforms. And I've recently uh, started a Patreon where I have monthly tutorials available. Um, so small stuff like this study of an eye, um, you'll be able to learn things like that. And then for the higher tiers, I have like full animal portraits available. Uh, and if you sign up, you also get access to all the previous videos on that tier. So uh, if you enjoy my tutorials and you like my work, please head over to my Patreon um, more. But basically, uh, yeah, I just try and teach you the 17 years of knowledge that I have um, to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to wait as or work as hard as I did. <laughs> um, so this tiger eye is something that I wanted to provide for people for free to have a go at just because tigers are super popular, eyes are really popular, and I just thought it would be a fun little project. Um, I'm going to use one one pencil palette. So we're going to use the Stabilo Carbothellos. So these will probably be looking at the artwork. This will be the primary colors that I use maybe a couple more um but yeah I'll talk you through step by step what we do so um I'm also gonna want to have access to some blending stumps so this is a number one and number two blending stump so they're quite small and thin um I like to use my electric eraser um this deal one's awesome but you can get um, cheaper ones. Uh, it's not that this was super expensive, but they have replaceable eraser heads and they just take double A batteries. Triple A? Double A? Uh, one of them. Triple A batteries. Um, they're perfect because they, because of the oscillation of the eraser, it doesn't require pressure. So you're less likely to damage your paper um, and you can erase marks with a little bit more precision. So the paper that I'm using today is the Dark Grey by Clairefontaine Pastel Matte. This is just an off cut of a bit of scrap that I've got. So it's a little bit dirty and a bit scrappy. Um, but yeah, I've already marked out my outline and I've provided a um, free line art outline in the description below. You'll also have access to the Tiger's Eye um, photo, which is a royalty-free reference photo. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got it from unsplash.com. Um, so if you're looking for royalty and copyright-free reference photos, Unsplash or Pixabay is a pretty good place to go. Uh, but you'll be able to access those in the link below if um, you don't want to um trace out the outline yourself or if you don't want to freehand the outline but yeah let's get started so basically I've got my reference photo up to uh, up on a screen to <clears throat> the left of me and I've zoomed in nice and close so I can really see all the detail in that eye um, I'll also just quickly apologize, guys. I've got chest infection, so if I have to cough or I sound a bit gross, I'm really sorry, but there's really not a lot I can do about it. So, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> initially, I'm going to start with my middle section. Um, I'm going to take my black pencil by Stabilo, so my 750, and I'm going to just really, really lightly map in that pupil so I'm just doing circular motions and just really really gently laying a little bit of that pigment down so I can see in the reference photo that it's not a full circle we've got some highlight and um, shadow coming through there so I'm going to make sure that I'm not just whacking in a circle in the middle of the eye I want to really try and replicate what I see in the reference photo <clears throat> I have a little dash that comes up so I'm going to lightly map that in as well uh, I am now going to take my, or one of my blending stumps, and really lightly, I'm going to just in a circular motion again, use that tip to push in that dark pigment into the tooth of the paper and just kind of fill it in a little bit. So we're not worrying about going too dark to start with. I want to build my layers on my eye. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm actually going to take <clears throat> my 280, I believe it is, um, which is like a warmy orangey brown color. And so you can see I've kind of got a circle I've drawn where the eye color transitions into more like yellows and greens. So with this orangey 280, I'm going to slowly start to mark in some circular motions on the outer edge of that to fill that in. And before I start, actually, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to try and dull out those lines that I've popped in. <coughs> so because pastel matte doesn't like to be erased and because pastels, although they're opaque, they're also quite transparent when they're lighter colors, I want to erase my markings as much as I can. Otherwise that color, those underlines or these line arts line drawings are going to poke through the pigment and I don't want that. So coming back in with my 280, I'm going to go in with my circular motions just lightly. Again, I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm going really, really gently with my pressure. You can probably almost see it's, it's quite transparent um, because we're going to build on that color and we don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too quickly with the pigment otherwise we'll lose our capacity to add layers so I'm just working my way around again taking care there is this is where the highlight is this sort of outer portion I do not want to draw color in that area because highlights are super light colors usually so like blues and light grays and things like that I want to try and avoid muddying up the pigment um, so I'm going to keep my colors out of there for the time being. So now that I've kind of laid that down, I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm just going to lightly buff in that base pigment just to push it into the tooth. You don't have to be too precise about that. Just, yeah, little circles. Again, I'm not pushing very hard. Um, I'm hardly pushing it all. I'm pretty much just letting the blending stump touch the paper. Okay, next I'm going to take my um, more of an orange based colour. So this is the 675 by Stabilo. And from the outer corner of the eye, I'm going to do little circular motions again, and I'm just starting to drag that pigment a bit closer to the pupil. Um, but I don't want to go all the way across, and I don't want to completely cover that lighter orange that I've popped in there. So I know this color looks really bright in comparison to the reference photo, but once we finish blending everything and working all the colors together, that will, um, yeah, that will calm it down and neutralize it a little bit. Again, we've got a really high shadow up there. I've just drawn up the top because I'm not paying attention. So I'm going to take my eraser and just get rid of that. Um, next, I'm actually going to take this terracotta color. So a 670. And in this bottom right corner, I'm going to start to slowly in circular motions, just map in this little edge here. I'm not going all the way around and you'll see I'm not really following the sphere of the eye anymore. Coming back up the top and I'm going to start to blend that in just using my circular motions and then just gently drag that pigment down. Again, when I say I'm hardly touching the paper, like I am hardly touching the paper with my pencil. It's so light. And you can see how much you, you can apply less pressure by placing your fingers towards the end of your pencil because you won't physically be able to apply a heavy hand if you do that. Just coming around to this inner corner. I don't know why my eyeball, I think I might have traced my outline a little bit funny. My eyeball's um, a bit sharp in that corner. We'll fix that. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. That's a bit better. I was like, <laughs> there's a little bit of a dash, but it shouldn't be that much. Now I'm going to take my six, uh, actually, doo -doo -doo, I'm going to come in with our burgundy or maroon color, which is a 640. I've rubbed all the gold off this so you can't see it. But this is the 640. And again, on that outer edge, just little circles. And I'm not covering the whole section. I'm just, again, kind of keeping it about <coughs> halfway to two thirds or one third of the um, pigment I just laid down. And coming up the top. Again, just slowly building my layers really lightly. Now I'm going to take my blending stump and just on the edges here, I'm just hardly touching this and I'm going to start to, in circular motions, kind of cross the bright orange pigments with the darker ones and try and blend that edge a little bit better so it's a lot more soft. Again, hardly any pressure at all, just lightly touching that paper. I don't want to pull the pigment out of the paper. I'm trying to blend them together. And just work your way around. Now we want to take um, possibly a little bit of like a, I'm going to take my, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to take my like sunshine yellow color, which is a 692. Again, I've rubbed all the gold off. And I'm just going to really lightly fill in this inner circle. Remember that your highlight is here, so not to cross over that. We can, it's not quite bordered there in the reference photo. It comes down a bit further. That's not such a worry that we've put a bit of pigment there because that outer edge is more dark and dirty gray. Again, and this is just what we call blocking in. So we're just creating a base basically um a base pigment to work off the more we build our layers the more realistic it will look at the moment it just looks like garbage but we need to persevere <clears throat> so i want to also come in i'm gonna grab like a two uh, might grab a six two five so right near this pupil at the base, we have a little bit of brown coming off. I'm going to start to drag that out, almost like in a little starburst motion. So just little lines. I'm just dragging that out in a way. And then coming up, <coughs> I'm going to add a little bit just above where this highlight sits. And work my way around. <clears throat> we'll take our 635 which is like a warm sorry a cool brown like a blue based brown and again right on the border of that eye and just working in about halfway a few little dips we're not covering I didn't do like a a straight line I did a couple of little circles up came down and then up so like two little peaks or three little peaks just in this inner area. Again, coming down to the edge of that eye and we're going to start to replicate that at the top as well. So kind of starting where the outer edge is. Always with very light pressure. And coming around. Just keeping on that outer edge. And then circular motions and bringing the pigment a bit closer into the middle of the eye. 
we can take our blending stump, clean it off if you need to, and just lightly, lightly, lightly touch and drag that pigment so it blends in with itself. Okay. I actually want to grab my blending stump again, clean that off, and I'm just going to blend in this yellow that we just put in because it's pretty pigmented and we definitely don't have that in the actual eye. Great. Now I'm going to come in with my green. So this is a 575 by Stabilo. And I'm going to, so right here there's a little patch of green i'm just going to start to work that in again little light circles and then strokes we have a little bit on this outer edge and then it kind of comes into the pupil so doing a little almost like a semicircle and then bringing it back towards the pupil then on this outer side of the eye so where we put that brown in i can see a few strokes coming off. So I'm just gonna start to drag that out and away. Again, I'm not really crossing too much into that orange area. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a semi circle on the edge in circular motions. And then coming up the top, just really lightly dragging that pigment in. Just going to grab that brown again, so the 625, and right on the edge of this green I've popped in here, I'm just going to do a little dash and then skip a section and then another little dash. And just touch up this little starburst I rubbed out just a little bit. Okay. Let's come back in with our uh, 280, so our orangey kind of brown. And I just want to start to, again, redefine a little bit of that orange around the edge of this green. I might come in with this uh, 685 and just start to use it to kind of blend over the top of that orange a little bit. And then around this border here. And coming back up. Let's come in with our sunshine yellow so the 692 and right on the bottom of that border we're going to start to just draw in a few little dashes and streaks and drag it down a little bit so just going around on that outer border i'm going to come in on this inner section just a little semicircle and a bit of a drag up and then Again, a few little dashes and drags along here. Now let's grab our blending stump, clean that off, and then I'm just going to start to drag out the edge of that bright yellow we've just popped in and then the other side. So I don't want to erase it, but I want to just dull it down a little bit. Okay, we're not going to come in with our warm grey, so a 764. And I'm going to start to just go over a little bit of that orange and then a few little circles in here or semicircles. Go over that green just a little bit and neutralize it. Okay, we want to come around. Um, so I'm going to grab a dark blue, the 760, and we want to start to kind of come around the border of this eye a little bit. There's a fair bit of blue in this eye, um, or in this photo actually, through the black. 
So I'm going to come up, I'm just going to border that eyeball just a little bit. And over the top. This is a very um, greeny based blue. And around the edge there. Um, now I want to, at the very top, start to kind of circular motions. I'm on the color of the eye now, so I'm gonna, just gonna start to, or the iris, I'm just gonna start to do circular motions and drag that down, because I'm beginning to add in a little bit of that shadow that we see. And just using my circular motions. Don't worry if you muck it up by like doing a bit of a smear like that. Just always take your blending stump, clean it off a little bit and drag your lighter pigment back into your darker pigment and then clean it off if you need to. Blend it out. We can, this is the wonderful thing about pastels, we can kind of always make corrections. Now, I'm actually going to take that dark blue again and just start to kind of go over that pupil edge just a little bit and I can see a little dash in there of blue and then right on this border this green kind of turns into a gray gr bluey green so I'm just gonna do a little starburst off that right corner of the eye I'm gonna take a blue based Gray, I can never read this gray. It's a 720, I think, or 726. So it's a blue based gray. And I want to go over that area I just touched on with the blue. Just rub that in. Now, let's come back in with our black, retouch that pupil. Start to drag it out just a little bit. Now I'm going to take it and start to border this upper eye. And again, circular motions and then lightly dragging that pigment. So keeping my pressure very, very light as I work my way around. Because I want to use the pencil to blend in with the bottom pigment pigments not just lay the color over the top if that makes sense so I want to pet the pastels kind of will blend themselves you don't have to use a blending stump it's about um it's helpful but it's about more about um utilizing the pressure and the way you hold your pencil will create that blend so I can see here the outer corner is quite black, so I'm just going to start to map that in Yeah, I'm actually going to take that grey-blue again, so the 7 uh, to 6. I'm right on the corner of this eye where it is a bit of a point. I'm going to start to, in circular motions again, just kind of fill that in a little bit. Add in a tiny bit of depth to that eye. And up here, as it kind of borders where the highlight is, same thing, just a, just a little bit. And then it kind of comes around very lightly. Now, let's try and start to pop in some of this highlight. So I'd probably go in with my light baby blue color, which is a 435. And I'm going to border this sharp line just here. I'm going to bring it up and then I'm going to start to kind of do a, a semicircle around to the left. And then I'm going to bring it out almost like a fan, very lightly. And just fill that in. I'm then going to drag that semicircle at the 
on this outer left corner, I'm going to start to lightly drag that down a little bit. We're going to switch over to this other side, follow up that outer edge where there is that highlight, and come around. Now I'm going to be less uniform here. So um, this side is a bit jaggedy, so I'm going to kind of try and replicate that with a bit of a wiggly line. And just filling in that pigment really, really gently. And then in this green where I've popped it, I'm going to drag that down and drag it out. Again, really lightly. I'm not too worried because we're going to keep adding layers. Next, I want to take my, I might take my 110. I just got to find it. Okay, we grabbed a 110, which is like a very whitish looking gray. On the camera, it's pulling up as looking almost white, but I promise it's not white. This is that next to a white pencil. So, with my 110, right in this bottom inner corner, I'm just going to do a circle. And then, as I'm working my way out in the circle, I'm, I'm lightening my pressure so I'm not pushing as hard. So it's quite dense and heavy in the middle and then lighter as I work my way out. I'm going to come up to this upper third and right on the border I'm just going to draw a little line and then I'm going to do another little spot just above that circle we did. So I skipped about a half millimetre and then did another little circle. And then on this outer edge, I'm just going to very, very gently map the line that we put in, but super, super light, like hardly anything. Now we're going to switch over to this uh, right-hand side. And so at the bottom, again, I can see a little burst of light. So I'm going to pop that in. I'm going to skip a little gap and then fill in this top area quite brightly. Again, very light pressured miss a little gap and again just lightly add that in and then do a couple of little pulled lines out to the right. Now I want you guys to know that I'm not trying to identically replicate this photo I just want to do the basis of what looks like a realistic eye so don't get too hung up on the details you can mark them precisely if you want to that's not the aim of this tutorial this is just to be a quick tutorial to smash out and learn how to draw an eye. So we're going to grab our 405, a really bright blue, and I am going to very lightly in the bottom of this highlight just start to, and a little bit across the pupil, start to kind of map in a little bit of that blue. So I'm very gent very gently trying to blend it over the top. So it's called glazing. So essentially what we're trying to do is um, lightly apply a thin layer of the pigment over the top of an uh, existing pigment so that we are altering the tone and um, I don't want to completely replace the colour. I'm using this to try and brighten or, or slightly alter the colour that's underneath, if that makes sense to you. Just got to draw a little line. We can see a line coming up on a diagonal to this upper left corner. And then there is one in the opposite highlight between the two that we left a little gap. And then the black on the edge, that line of black kind of blends into blue. So I'm just gonna very gently go over the top and again, lightly, lightly touch into that highlight we've just done. And I can see another line through here. And I'm going to grab my blue gray that I can never remember the name of. Two, six, sorry, seven, two, six, this one. And again, I'm going to go over this line that we just put in, a little gap here, and then just kind of work in a few little spots. Now we can take our white, but very, very, very seldom use this and just go over a couple of those little areas if you need just to add a tiny punch of white but 
Don't overdo it, really lightly. Again, I'm using it more as to blend and kind of pop and brighten the colors that are down. I'm not trying to use the white to be white. I just, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I just wanna use it to brighten that color up a little bit. So I'm gonna come back in with my black and I'm gonna start to fill in this outer edge. When I'm filling in space, I like to use circular motions. I feel like it gets into the tooth of the paper a little bit better than if I was to just scribble like this. So little circular motions. And then coming up and around the top of that eye. Keep on working your way around. And then it starts to get quite fat and wide at that upper section where it transitions into hair. So I'm just doing some strokes to replicate the fur as it kind of transitions across. And I've got this upper corner. I'm gonna slowly and very lightly take my black pencil and just kind of trace that water line under the eye. Really light, I'm hardly applying pressure. I don't want it to be super black and pigmented. I'm then gonna come back in with my burgundy and just border the bottom of that eye. You can drag it up a little bit into this orange actually if you like. We're gonna take our blending stump and we're just gonna lightly buff in that orange. And just try and calm that down a little bit. Clean off the stump if you need to. Now, coming back with my, um, so I'm gonna come back in with my burgundy. And so this little dip where I've got orange, just above that, I'm gonna do a little quick line of burgundy as it kind of comes into the eye. And then I'm just gonna grab my 635 and very lightly go over the top of that again. And now come in with a super clean blending stump and just tap over the top of that to dull out the pigment. I don't want to drag it. I don't want to blend it. I just want to tap over the top. Okay, let's grab our black again and we're going to start to continue coloring in this section. So this inner eye here, there's a bit of an angle and then this transitions to more of a bluey color. So I'm gonna cut that off with my black and then we can see that there's a section where there's some highlight here. So I wanna do my best to kind of map that out in my dark pencil, but not really go over the top. You can if you want to, even just very, very lightly like this, a very thin base color. And then we're gonna to start to fill that in. Be mindful of the border of the eye and not to go over the top of the color with your black. Again, just circular motions, working our way around. If you want to, you can take your blending stump to push that black pigment into the tooth of the paper. I might take my <clears throat> terracotta color, so my 670, and just on the border of this eye, because I feel like I've brought it in a little bit too much, I'm going to start to blend from my light into my dark area and just fix that 
border. I've just dragged it down a little bit because it had kind of come up into the eye and made the eye shape a little bit weird. I'm going to come back in with my black and just through this bottom burgundy corner, there is a little bit where it kind of darkens just a wee bit. So I'm going to very, very lightly add in a bit of darker pigment there. I'm not trying to make it black. I'm trying to use the black to, to deepen the tones already there. Um, I'm going to take my blending stump, just lightly blend that in. Great. So you can see how pigmented that is just by building our layers. So it's definitely brighter than the reference photo that we've got, um, but I still think it looks great. So grab our black again, just mapping in a little bit on the edge of this eye. <clears throat> now, let's take a little bit of, um, I'm actually going to bring in something to the mix, which you don't have to do. Um, it is the Creta Color Black Pastel, um, or chalk it's sometimes called, and it's the deepest, blackest black that you can get. And I'm just going to start to go over this pupil with that just a little bit. Again, only in the sections that are supposed to be black and not the blue sections. So you can see how much that's deep in that pupil already. It's not necessary, it's just a really nice little extra touch to the photo that we've already got or to the work that we've already got. Um, and you can again go over, I would use this sparingly. I wouldn't do the whole thing. I like to use it to go over areas that I want to be really deep in value, but not um, yeah, I, I don't want to use it for the whole eye, if that makes sense, or like for everything that I do. Only the areas that are center focus and that I want a really deep value. And then I can see it kind of comes around up here. And just that border there. Just going to use this to blend out my edge a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm just just blending in over the top where I said that you could fill in or you can leave it blank and the reason why is because I'm about to go in with my light blue again so my baby blue color which is a four th four three five and I want to start to map that highlight in so we've got a bit of a dash and then one a little bit closer, so it, it starts small, it then kind of tucks in, gets a little bit wider, gets really close to that iris, and then thins out and comes right on the border of the eye. But I'm going to make my pressure very light as I start to border the bottom of that eye. I'm going to take my electric blue, so my 405. And I'm just on this inner one, glazing over the top a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my 110, which is my very whitish gray. And I'm just going to go along the left edge the best I can. And then this bottom is a little dash and a pull. And then this top of this one on the left. A little dash and then pull it down. Okay, let's take our 760 and I'm going to start to build up this waterline. So, using my circular motions, I start to kind of fill in the tooth of the paper. Now remember as well, when we're creating realistic artworks, we want to try our best to match the colors, but it's not imperative to be exact. It's okay to take a bit of artistic license and do your best to match as much as you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If you get hung up on those minor details being exactly 
the same, um, yeah, you'll, you're just going to get mad at yourself and you're going to not enjoy what you're doing. So I'm going to start to border the top of this black that we've mapped in with a little bit of blue as it transitions, and then we're going to blend it out with some black in a sec so it doesn't look so crazy. I'm actually going to take my electric blue again, and I'm going to start to lightly go over, really lightly go over this blue that I've just put in. Um, because it's it's a probably a mix between the two really. And uh, just coming down. Okay. I'm gonna take my clean blending stump and just blend them. I'm not being too precise, just doing my best to kind of try and blend them out so they're not as random in color if that makes sense like they're really it's a bit of a strange color it's not what we want okay let's go in with how do I feel about this color yeah let's go in with this color so this is a 720 it's like a, a kind of warmish gray I would say like a mix between a blue gray and a warm gray and we can see on the this lower kind of waterline on the tiger's eye where we come in here. So this kind of comes in on a little bit of an angle. And we're closer to, so we want to start closer to the eyeball and then lighter as we work out towards the outer edge of the waterline. So we come in and just lightly buff down as we start to get to this outer corner of the eye I want to really lighten my pressure and I almost don't want to add much pigment there and then we come back and we're gonna brighten that a little bit so right on that line I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure and work my way down I'm not doing a solid line all the way across. I've got a few little gaps where I'm a bit lighter in how much pressure I'm applying. And then in this blue part of the inner corner, I'm just going to do a little circular motion and buff up. I am now going to take my black again and try and angle my pencil because I want to use the pointier section. So often we draw like on an almost horizontal plane or a bit of a 45 degree angle with the pencil against the paper. I want to turn my pencil up to about 90 degrees and try and get the sharpest point possible. So I'm really looking closely at my artwork and where the point is to touch the paper. And I'm just trying to take a really sharp point to that waterline where the eyeball meets the waterline. I'm now going to take my black. And just underneath that highlight that we've added in, only on this like kind of like middle section, I'm going to start to work my way back. Again, just darkening and deepening that underline only. And then bringing it up there. And across, I'm just touching this up because it's got more of a curved shape. And then the eyeball comes down into this top corner. I'm going to drag that around. And then I can see it kind of comes out a little bit over here. And down a little bit. I'm going to grab randomly my purple. So I want a bit of my C, sorry, my 770. And I'm just going to start to map in a little bit of the corner of this duck, kind of like where his goopy, teary ducts come out. I'm just going to start to map in there a little bit. And then as this water line kind of comes back out to the eye, 
or the edge of the eye, sorry, and then just above that. And we can come back in with our blues. So we'll take our 760 and go over the top to match the color a little bit better. And then I'm going to take a blending stump and just really push that pigment in so we have something to layer off. Now let's take our black and again we're just going to start to blend up into that blue so it's not quite as um, just random and there in your face. You can see me doing a few little flicks off the top and I'm following the direction of the fur as I work my way around. So again, that's just to try and give a basis for where we see the eye, the like the eyelash region transitioning to fur. Now coming to this outer corner, I just want to take my black really lightly buff it and then start to kind of blend it down lightly. Take my blackest black and retouch up my corner waterline. Take the blending stump and just right on the edge, just blend that out a wee bit. Now I can also see in the corner of this black there is a little bit of lighter colour so I'm going to take my warm grey which is a 764 and I'm really lightly going to draw in a few little circles so there's one and then there's another one and then I'm going to lightly draw around it super light like almost not touching that paper. Okay, let's start to work on this inner eye here. So I'm going to take my warm gray again and I can see as this kind of follows along in a line, I'm going to add in a little bit of a lighter gray, almost in an upwardy C curve to that left upper corner. And then we kind of skip a gap where it's very dark and then it starts to kind of again follow like a lighter box section almost a little bit more of a curve in there um and then it comes down and into this inner corner and i'm just buffing out really lightly and then we're going to come in with let's go in with our 700 which is like a light gray and it has like a yellowy outer casing and we're going to do a few little lines in here so a dash and a line and a little kind of semi c and then a little dash and drag it up and if you feel like it's a bit too bright just grab your blending stump and just pat over the top of it super gentle If you don't have a blending stump, you can use a cotton bud, but I really do recommend blending stumps. They're much better. They go by the name of like a tor tortillion, I think it is. Um, but if you just type in blending stump, you can get them from most art stores. Even places like Kmart and stuff, I think, sell them. Um, Amazon sell them. eBay sell them. Anywhere. Anywhere you can basically get them. So I'm going to take my black on this outer corner. I'm just going to start to quickly sketch in a few lines and then coming up to this upper portion again I can kind of see it's like starting to become more like a fanning motion so I'm going to start to go um, out horizontal and change my direction as I work my way up and then coming back up to the eye Touch up wherever you need to. So I'm going to deepen my values in the corners of the eye where I can see it's quite dark. And take my purple and just 
again, buff that in a little bit. Don't be afraid to work areas and rework them. It's not the end of the world. We're going to take our grey again and just start to kind of add in a few more of these highlights that I can see. So that inner corner. Okay. Now, let's start a little bit on this upper eyelid. So around here, we've got quite a lot of white and gray. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit on my reference photo because it's probably a bit too close and I don't wanna see too much detail. So um, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so let's start. We're going to take our coolish grey, so our 700. Um, before we do that, actually, I'm going to take my electric eraser and just try and dull out these lines where the pigment would be really light because I don't want it poking through. Okay. So I'm going to take my 700. And I'm going to start to follow the direction of the fur. So I can see it kind of curves in an upward motion in this left side. Kind of goes up. And the hairs are smaller here. They're not massive. So I'm just slowly working my way up. Again, I'm not being too precise at the moment because this is like my base color so I'm just slowly working up and coming up across the top of this eyelash there's a lot of warms and cool tones playing off itself in this area of the eye and we come up here there's a lot of white so I'm not going to be too detailed on the fur because the idea of this portrait is not about drawing or this study is not about drawing fur. It's about um, how to draw the tiger's eye. I'm also going to erase just under here because I want to start blocking in this white. And it comes up and across here and it comes up and across here. So much white in this portrait. <sighs> okay, taking that same pencil and we're working our way down from the bottom corner so I can see that the fur is kind of work coming down on this little angle towards the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to try and keep my stroke length not too long since the hair in the picture just here is actually quite short. And then I am going to start to, as the hair transitions along here, it goes more from an angular motion to almost horizontal. So it starts to curve around. So I want to make sure I'm replicating that with the strokes that I apply. Just coming around and again my my uh, length of my strokes can start to kind of elongate a little bit because that that's what happens with the fur as we get to this area and down Now when I'm drawing my hair, I don't want to start each hair from the same spot. It's sporadic where it kind of starts from. I work my way, you know, I change my spot where I start all the time because that's what actual hair and fur does. You know, nothing starts in a uniform dot, 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 dot line. It doesn't work like that. And drawing like that will make your picture look stiff and flat and unrealistic. And remembering to follow the direction of the fur so we can see it's curving up and over the eyelash or eyebrow or whatever you want to call this section. It's coming up and over. And then on this upper portion, it's going up towards this right 
um, corner. So always checking back at your reference photo and trying to replicate the direction of the fur and the bone structure will be such a key important thing for you to achieve um, realistic looking animal fur and animals just in general. So let's work my way around. As I come down, I'm gonna be not too dense here because there's actually a big black stripe and I want to lay my dark color first and then I'll come in with my lighter color. So, sorry, I've just banged my head into the camera. <laughs> I'm coming up and so as we get into this portion, it starts to curve almost in, a, in like an upward little wave. And just trying to fill this area in. Again, I'm not too worried because we're going to create depth by adding multiple colors and layers. Um, I just want to start to fill this area in so I know what's going on. Remember to keep checking your reference photo. Check that your length of your lines are appropriate for the, where you're drawing the hair. Okay, let's come in with our black. I'm going to start to fill in this bottom stripe. I'm just coming off that corner. And working my way up. So... I can do a couple of little strokes in the area where there's a bit of white hair and then a tiny bit off right on the edge. And then up here I want to do again some almost like in a fanning motion some darker patches. I'm going to grab my 280 and I'm just going to start to map in a little bit of the um more orange fur. So again, I'm taking my pencil more on a 45 degree angle to get a wider um, base on my lid. And I'm just blocking in. I'm just going to use that in circular motions and start to kind of block in a base color everywhere I see a little bit of um, orange. So there's a bit of black coming off here, and then this kind of transitions into an orange. And then in this bottom corner, and then on the edge of this black, and then down under the eye. Just chucking that in, blocking it in. Great. I'll come back in with my lighter gray like we did before and then I'm just going to start to, yeah, um, kind of block in those light tones as we work around the eye. I'm not too stressed about the detail currently. Let's just get it in there. We're going to use a blending stump anyway to smear that out and it comes up here. And it's already down there. Cool. Okay. Let's, oh, I've just moved the picture. Okay. I was sorry. I was just trying to move the reference photo and I somehow managed to um, drag it, um, drag the whole screen. So coming back in with my black, again, just starting to kind of map back in some of those darker areas. This would be a good time if you have pan pastels. <laughs> and we're going to come up and under this eye. Same thing, just map in that black. Just 
And then there's a few little spots under the eye, just fill those in. I know it looks ridiculous at the moment, but I promise you, because we're going to build our layers, it will look better. And we've got some black in this area here. And just filling it in. And then up on this little curve. And under here. Okay, let's grab our blending stump and just start to buff in some of that pigment into the tooth so we have a nice base to work off. Okay, clean that off when you need to. And I'm just going to smooth out all those blacks. Now we can, I'm going to switch my, oh, see what happens when you don't clean your blending stump? I just smeared dirt all through the lighter areas. So I'm just going to use in circular motions quickly to fill in that white zone. And now we have what looks like a children's drawing. Um, but we will we will keep we'll keep going and it will come together. It's gonna get there. Okay, since we've got our base laid down now, I'm gonna start to work in a bit more detail in the fur. So let's take our terracotta, so our six seven zero, and on this outer corner of the eye, I'm gonna start to draw in some light hairs, very small as they come off the eye really lightly and just working my way to the outer edge again i'm being quite sparse and sparing with them and we can start to work our way up a little bit again changing the length of our fur as we draw um, and as we change areas of the body because the hair length changes Let's go in with our 625 and I'm going to start to go over a couple of those areas again, really light as it transitions into the white and then down in this lower portion of the eye. So our hair kind of changes directions to a downward. So this area kind of goes out and up. And I want to kind of replicate that in my picture. I'm going to come in with my uh, 685, so more of a yellow based tone. And I'm going to just start to, between some of those darker areas, start to map in some little hairs. And then we can take our orange based color. So it's a 675. And again, just where we see it's quite orange. So this outer corner of the eye, we can kind of start to bring that orange in. And now we're going to grab a little bit of yellow. So the sunshine yellow 692 and sparingly start to add in a little bit of that. Now I'm going to take my blending stump clean it off and then drag those colors together to soften that fur just a little bit and down. Now we can come back in with a bit more of a brown tone. So let's take a 610, which is kind of like a greeny yellowy based brown. And again, we're just going to start to add in some little furs. And just work our way. It's quite dark and deep in color and tone around this corner of the eye. So I want to pop that in. Let's come back in with more yellow base. So a 685. Again, just kind of working in between some of those darker little fairs 
just using little dashes. And when you do fur, you always want to pull away. So wherever the root starts is where your pencil mark starts, and then you drag away so the end of the hair is pointy. And then we can start to come in with more of a yellow based on this inner edge where the eyebrow is because it really starts to be quite yellow around here. And we'll come back in with our sunshine yellow, so the 692, and start to work in a little bit. Again, kind of working our way in from the cool tones or the light tones to the outer edge and down and I'm going to grab my, I might actually grab my warm grey so that is the 704 and start to just work in the border of that and a little bit through that yellowy portion that we've just popped in. Come back with a bit more of a brown. So I want my 610. Mm, 610 or 625? Maybe. No, let's go in with a bit of 610. Uh, right on this outer edge. Really lightly. Just kind of trying to use the lead to blend with the under pigments already. I don't. I don't want to so much create fine details with that, so I'm trying to use pressure that kind of drags the pigment in a wide fashion, if that makes sense. I am going to blend out with my blending stump. Now I want to take my warm grey again, and I'm going to work up in this inner part of the eyelid, just coming up and then across. That's the meat there. And I'm going to grab my, I'm going to grab my dark blue color, so my 760, right where the hair kind of starts to transition off the eyelid or that inner eye. I'm going to start to draw a few little specks in the fur really tiny little dots and then drag them up very small now let's grab our 110 and start to pull in some lighter highlights i'm not filling in the whole area i'm just doing some strokes to imp uh give the information that there is like hair with some light on it. Okay guys, I'm gonna come in with an actually more of a warm gray. So it's a 708. And just on this outer edge of the white where it kind of transitions into the yellow and the lighter fur, I'm going to start to just work in a few strokes and then bring it on up into this peak where it's the dark fur. So I'm not trying to cover the whole area, I'm just adding in some depth to that fur. And then coming up, same thing, just a few little strokes through from the corner of where the eye meets and then up. And then on this inner portion of the eye, I'm going to come up and start to transition up and over in that almost wave motion. Just to add a little bit more depth to the fur. And then coming into this white at the top, I'll start to work in a few of those strokes coming up. Remembering to alternate your starting point and not keep your lines like all in a row. Let's come back in with our warm grey. So our uh, 704 
and really lightly just buff over the top of that darker warm grey you popped in. I'm just almost holding my, so I don't want to create a sharp point with this, I'm, I'm holding the pencil sort of almost on a horizontal 45 degree angle and using a broader flatter base of the whole point to try and blend out and glaze over the top. Now we can come back in with our one one. Oh, actually, let's go in with a little bit of like our lemon yellow. I just need to sharpen it, guys. Just bear with me one momento. Okay. So around this edge, I'm going to start to pop in some more lemony yellow colored strokes. So this is the 105. And I'm keeping that within the more highlighted area and not really going into that gray that we just laid down. Only a few little points of my um, stroke go up and in there, if that makes any sense to you. I, don't, I just want to kind of cross over. I don't want to cover it. And now I'm going to come back in with my 110, my light whitish gray, and start to pop in a few little peaks just in the center. And then I'm going to grab my white, my actual white, and start to pop in just a few little highlights. And I'm rotating my pencil as I work to try and keep my point as sharp as possible. Sorry about the shaking being a bit aggressive. <laughs> okay, so let's come back in with, I might grab a 615, which is like a yellowy uh, brown, but it's not quite that uh, 680. So the 680 is the one on the left, and the new color is this lighter brown that I've just picked up. So we're gonna start to just gently work that up and over the top of where we've applied this orange fur again in like a broad based fashion so just trying to kind of fill it in and glaze over the top cross a little bit into that white as you need to and then same coming back down to the bottom of this corner of the eye and working around <coughs> And I'm going to take my 635, so my cool lace based brown, and I can see that there's a few little hairs transitioning through this orange. So again, I'm just going to every now and then pop a little hair in there, and then where this patch is, is a little blacky brown spot. So I'm just going to start to map that in again with a bit more precision, but not being too worried. Just making sure I'm kind of trying to follow the fur direction. Just a little bit. Now, let's grab our black. <clears throat> and at the base of the root of the hair and then drag it up. So just a few little notches, drag it up. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, and I come back in with a 635 and right on that border, I'm trying to just blend those colors in just a little bit better. <clears throat> a few little specks here and there. <clears throat> Let's take our warm gray. So our uh, 104 <clears throat> and just Go over it a little bit between the brown and where the hair starts to meet the white. <clears throat> and then I'm going to grab my sunshine yellow, which is the 602, and pop in some more areas of little highlights. So I do some little strokes and I miss a gap. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've really got the coughs today. <clears throat> so coming up from this edge, again, just 
following the direction of the fur and the length of the stroke or the length of the hair in that area and slowly working our way around. I'm going to bring a few little strokes up through this black that we've or and brown that we've just popped in and then I'm going to start to really bring it in up on the edge of where the fur meets the white and blend it out. It's very light as it gets to this little peak here. Don't forget to come up and under where your black is we can touch that up if we need. So I'll take my brown, my 635, and I'm just going to touch up the tops of that area I kind of muddied and messed up a little bit with my yellow. Now we can take a little bit of our burgundy actually. So it is the 640, our little burgundy colour. And again, just coming off that brown mark or that black with a little bit of glazing. <clears throat> and then on this outer edge, it's a few streaks just in there. Now, if you want to blend everything in, you can grab your blending stump, just clean it off, turn it on a 45 degree angle, and just really lightly touch that paper and then drag it up follow the direction of your strokes and your fur to just really soften everything now let's come in with our very light yellow the 105 and again on this edge as it kind of starts to transition into white we're going to start to build in some brightness through the orange part or the yellow part of the fur and again, just trying to follow the line of direction with the uh, the hair. Gosh, I can't articulate my words today. Uh, so building, 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 just keep going through with your layers, touch up where you need to. And then we can take our blending stump and just blend out where we need to. Now I'm going to grab my <clears throat> light grey, so my 700 with our yellow barrel. And again, start to just map in a few of this hair or these hairs from the white section. And they kind of come up and then curve up and over. So it's really important to follow the bone structure in the face and the direction of the fur because that will give you your realism whether you do all the strokes or whether you just block it in. It's going to look a lot more realistic if we just follow the direction of the fur. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to start to really pop in because it's very, very bright white just there. And you might not even want to lay the more neutral tone underneath. I just prefer to do that. Um, I normally would go over with like a pit pastel. So a pit pastel white is really, really bright versus these um, Stabilo whites that like it's okay. Um, and it's because we're trying to stick to one palette today that I'm a little bit limited with colors and I can't quite match exactly what I see in the photo, but I'm going to do my best with what I've got. So I'm just working up and over and you can see exactly just here where I talk about um, pastel being even though it's opaque, it's very transparent in the in the lighter colors, and we can see a line that I didn't erase just there. Um, but we'll touch that up. And you can either go in and use your eraser and try and buff that out, or you can do something like grab your brown, your 635. There's actually a little bit of black fur there, so we can start to just kind of map that in a little bit and disguise and hide that line. So I'm going to take my blending stump just lightly, very lightly. I'm hardly touching that paper. Touch and drag. Clean it off when you need to. Touch and drag. I just want to show you the difference. I'm going to grab my favorite Castel Pit Pastel and look how bright that is. So I'm just going to touch that in there for a sec to really show you. Look at the difference it makes. This white, I love the Pit Pastel white. It's fantastic. It's so pigmented. 
a little bit off track there, sorry guys. Um, we're gonna take our warm gray and as this fur starts to blend into the white, we're gonna kind of cross across the yellow and then cross into the white to make these blend in just a little bit better. If you want to, you can grab that darker gray that we had, so the 708, and again, pop in a few streaks, not too many, just a streak every now and then, miss a gap, pop another one in, miss a gap, and I come back in with that warm gray, so the 704, and just lightly go over the top of that and blend it out and dull it down a little bit. Take your brown if you need, 635, and again, just keep building until you feel happy and satisfied with your layering. You might even pop a few little black strokes in there just to make it a bit more cohesive. Touch up my black down here. And then again, I'm going to take my clean blending stump. And I'm just going to try and make that look a little less like I've just randomly popped it in there and then it blends in. So I'm going to drag out and just blend in that bottom edge where the root goes. <clears throat> now coming up, let's take our yellowy sort of brown, so our 615. I just need to sharpen that a tiny bit. I don't have to, but I, I like to have semi-sharp pencils sometimes. So in this upper portion, I'm going to, I can see the fur actually runs like this way. So like an upward sort of curve and then almost like an upward C. Um, it's not, it kind of crosses over the white a little bit. So I'm going to start to map that in. And before I do that, I am actually going to take my eraser and try and get rid of this outline. It's gonna make my life a lot easier, not having to try and blend that as much. So through here, I'm just popping in my orangey yellow, drag it into the white a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back in with my white and I'm gonna to start to drag across a few sporadic hairs, because that's what we see happening. And I want to get them in before I lay too much pigment in the paper, and then there's not enough tooth for me to get a punchy white color. So just mapping that in, and then coming underneath um, here so I can see that this black probably doesn't come down quite as much as I made it. So I might take my yellowy brown color and just go over that bottom edge a wee bit and then come in with my warm gray, so 704. And again, just touch up that bottom edge just a little bit. So we can come back in with our warm gray and actually do a few little scattered bits through the edge of the white. Make it look a little bit more realistic. And now we're gonna take our warm or our cool brown, so our 635, I love this color. And right here, we're just gonna start to pop in a few little streaks and dashes. So I'm not doing so much a singular line. I kind of do like a little fan. It's a little bit of a fan and then I drag it up. And, oh, my pencil tin just moved. It scared the pants off me. So stroke coming up and then just going in between these white hairs I popped in. Very, uh, and I'm not trying to fill in all this yellow. I'm just doing a few little strokes and then missing a gap. Now we can take a bit more of our sunshine yellow, so the 692, and start to, again, pop in a few of those hairs. Not too many. 
and just lighten that orangey part up a little bit. And I might come in with my very light pale yellow, which is the seven. Oh, it's a 105. I think I keep telling you guys it's a 705. It's a 105. You, as you can see, it's got no gold on it really. And I'm trying to read this very faded, rubbed out number. So just popping in a few highlights there. And what we can do is grab our blending stump and just blend that out a little bit. Again, just remember guys, this is not a fur tutorial, so it's not super in depth. And I would definitely be more inclined to work and spend a lot more time working on the fur if I was doing a fur tutorial, but because it's not, I just want to map these in. So I'm going to take this blue gray 724 and start to just come along this edge a little bit because we're starting to transition into a cool blue gray as we get up here above the eye. And then keep coming up and following over the top of that dark bit. Don't stress if you bring your pigment into your black because we'll just go over that again. That's the beauty, good old beauty of pastels. So as the white transitions down here, it gets, again, it's quite blue. So I'm going to go in with this blue tone. I'm going to take my black pencil and I'm going to start to just draw in a few of these hairs on this black area that we have. Again, it kind of curves up and over in this section. And then like up to the right hand corner a little bit. Let's go in with some blue. <coughs> uh, seven, six, zero. And right on the border, on this outer lateral edge, we can see <coughs> it's much more of a blue tone. So I'm going to start to, again, pop that in a little bit. And if you want to, you can take your 405 and same thing, just a few strokes to replicate that blue, but not too much. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come in with my blue gray, 724. And again, just go a little bit on that edge and then cross over into that black. So I'm kind of coming up on both sides, but I'm leaving the middle part. <clears throat> Let's go in with our <clears throat> 110 and we're going to start to pop in some brighter strokes in here. And you can see because I've laid so many layers, it's really kind of blending really well as we start to bring the strokes through. So keep working your way up and filling in this white area. <clears throat> Just trying to mimic the stroke of the hair or the fur. <clears throat> and it comes up and crosses over into this black a little bit. I also need to sharpen this pencil again. <clears throat> so yeah, coming up and crossing over just a little bit with like really sharp little hairs. And then up at the bottom, it kind of flicks up into that darker black and coming across. Now I can see some eyelashes and um, some, some whiskers coming out of this section. So <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I go back in and map those in. But let's take our white for the time being. And we're going to come up in this lateral side of the white fur. So I don't want to go over here. I want to stay on this inner side with my white. Again, if you have that pit pastel, you can go in there and map that in. I'm going to do that just because I'm being a bit cheeky. So if you, this is probably the brightest or best white I've found is the Pit pastel, or alternatively, the Caran d'ache white is pretty good too. 
So just retouched up some of that white fluff. <clears throat> and again, just coming with some little dashes into the areas where there's some black, we want to show that that's poking through. We can come back in with our black pencil and in a couple of spots, sort of dig in a bit of black, drag it out, dig it in, drag it out. I'm just trying to show you that there's a little bit of a darker tone through there. And then I'm going to come back with my black over here. And same, just a few little sparse hairs in there. And then grabbing my orange and touching up the end. And up in here, there's a little bit more orange too. Sorry, I jumped around a little bit. Then I looked at my reference photo. I looked at my artwork and then was like, no, it needs a bit more. Um, <clears throat> let's come back in with a 110 and just keep following up this border. I just want to join that a little bit better so it looks a little bit more cohesive. And then coming back across with our whites into this section. Now my hairs now are kind of a bit more sporadic and not really following an exact straight line. I want to again mimic that um the way the hair is like kind of moving a little bit on its own or not in the same direction I can't I'm so sorry I'm really struggling to articulate today what I'm trying to say let's take our blending stump <coughs> very lightly just blur that white on the edge just really really light <clears throat> so I'm going to take my 110 again and continue to try and start to fill in these areas where there's some white fur. Again, I'm crossing into the black a little bit and we'll go in and touch that up with our blending stump. So coming up. Just try and follow that fur direction. I'm going to erase this line because I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to cut the eye short. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and we're going to sort of cut it short around there. I don't want to go too far out. Okay, so let's just grab our blending something real quick and just touch up this area where we've kind of crossed the white over with the dark. Just blend it in a bit because it just looks a bit ridiculous. So light touches and then just gently dragging out and away. Again, following that fur direction. I'm going to come in with my light blue gray, so the 724. And I just want to come on to this black fur again at the bottom half um, and kind of just make it a little bit more blue. And then I can kind of see it, there's, it joins across to this black patch here through the middle. And then it kind of gets a bit yellow. So we're going to take this yellowy brown, the 615, and very, very lightly just map in a few little hairs to mi mimic that yellow color through the fur. Again, not heavy at all, very, very gentle with my application. And then coming back in with our 110, and we're going to start to touch that up. And we can drag, there's a few hairs coming up and dragging into the black, so we can mock that. If you want to, do that with your white. So I've got my white pencil now. I'm just coming up and over the top.
I'm going to come up and fix this upper eyelid soon because um, there's a, quite a lot of detail in there, but I just want to block in this section. Okay, let's take our black and start to draw in some hairs in here. So it's kind of fanning up and crossing over into the white a little bit and then again scoops up kind of always into this upward left right, sorry, right top corner. Let's take our blue, so the 760, and same thing. Let's just kind of go over it a little bit. Not taking too much care. Let's go for our electric blue, so the 405. And again, just gently mapping in a few of the hairs, not much. And then we're going to switch over to our light blue gray, so the 724 and then be a little bit more careful with the fur. Just a few little strokes here and there. And then we're going to come back in with our black. Keep building those layers. And I'm kind of starting it darker at the root and then really light lightening my pressure up towards the end because I don't want I don't really want the whole thing to be dark. It's a lot more of a blue hue in the reference photo. So I'm going to take my blending stump, clean it off, and just really lightly do a stroke, clean it off, stroke, clean it off, stroke, clean it off, just to blend those lines together. Now, I clean my, <laughs> it's terrible, but I wipe my blending stump like on my trousers or like on the, like I've got a heated blanket on my legs at the moment. So I wipe the blending stump on that. Not ideal. You can put it on a cloth or like a sheet of paper, like I sometimes do over here. But that's more just to demonstrate to you guys. I don't actually do it on a piece of paper. I just wipe it on my clothes. Um, I don't recommend that though, <laughs> but <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because you're probably thinking like you keep saying wipe it, but you're not wiping. Um, I am, you just can't see it. So I'm coming back in with my white and just again trying to add a bit more brightness through this section. And then we skip over and it's very bright here. So I'm applying my white really thick and heavy and not worrying too much about general fur strokes. And then I can come over with a bit of the yellow. So let's go with a 615. And again, just slowly start to kind of map in a fanning direction to mimic that fur going back into the orange. Let's take our sunshine yellow. So that is the 602 or 692. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry if I've been telling you the wrong numbers. I literally can't read them. And coming around, but basically when I say sunshine yellow, I mean this color. <laughs> just follow the, I'm going to give you a list of pencil colors that I use. Just check the list. And then we're going to take our super light yellow. So the 105 and again, just on the border. And grab that out there. Let's take our blending stump and try and blend these colors out a little bit. Just on the border. And then we're going to come back in with our lights. So let's take our white. Going to come back in and just slowly marking those furs in now with a bit more care. Because I'm ending the portrait just here, I'm again, I'm not too worried about um, getting this outer edge really bright and punchy and, and doing all the little hairs. I just want to map in so I've got a general understanding of what's... Also, my eyes kind of can visually interpret the information. It's basically what I want. Now... Taking my 
I'm actually going to take my dark blue, so the 760, and I'm just going to drag a few little hairs up and across the white here, really lightly and gently. And then same down in this bottom section. I'm kind of dragging a few little hairs up to give it a little bit more depth and realism. So just a few little hairs crossing the border. Yeah, and then we can come over and do it. Ooh. Might have just touch that little guy up. That was an accident. Great. We can start to see a little bit of depth in the fur now. So it's getting there. I'm going to take my Faber Castell white because I'm cheeky and just again start to kind of pop in a little bit of highlight. And again through here because it's such a punchy white. <sighs> so you can see where the tooth is starting to get really filled up because I'm starting to get fall out of my pencil. Um, that's why that's occurring because there's not enough tooth to hold all the pigment. So I'm just coming in with a white now. You can just do this with your um, with your Stabilo white, but I'm just I've just got the past Faber Castell in my hand, so I'm just gonna start to work in some of that upper white fur again. Just popping in some streaks. I'm not filling in the whole area. I'm kind of being quite wide because I want to go back in and fill in some of those little gaps with darker tones and kind of meet into a point just there. So I'm going to come back in with my bluey gray which is the 724 and in between some of those white furs I'm going to start to just fill in with my blue gray. This might take a bit of layering, going through, doing the blue, going back in with the white. We might go in with a slightly darker blue gray. So we'll take our um, seven, uh, two, six, that I can never read. <laughs> and we're gonna start to map in. So right off the top of this corner, so where the eye, the pupil peaks up we're going to follow the line up and then we're going to start to just bring in a few sporadic hairs and then we're going to come in and then go over a few of the spots where we just put that lighter blue gray not all of them just a few and then especially start to use it to kind of blend this black corner into the white a little bit We'll grab our white pencil again and we're going to go over some of the highlighted hairs. So try not to rub out the kind of try and work away and around and over the um, like out of the way of the, the darker tones you just put in. Now we can grab our blending stamp, really clean it off and just lightly drag that fur. And blend it in a little bit better. Take your white again and do a few more hairs over the top. So just here I can see it's a lot whiter. I'm just going to start to fill that in as the brow kind of meets into this peak there's less definition in the fur and it becomes more of like an area that's just hit with light then we can take our warm gray so the 704 and on the bottom half it's very warm so we're just going to start to draw in our strokes and then on this upper edge same keeping that middle section free. So we're gonna come around to the outer edge with our light 
gray or our warm gray. And then this area where it starts to come over the eyelid, the same thing. It's quite dark. <sighs> okay, let's start to fix up this eyebrow section. So I'm going to take my yellow, so my 615, my yellow base brown, and I'm going to start to pop in just on the border of that eye, like a glazing of the orange. I'm going to skip a section, and then I'm going to start to do that again. Again, making sure you're following that downward stroke of the fur. Next, I'm going to come in with my dark blue, so my 760. And I'm going to start to draw in a few little dark hairs in between. I'm going to change the direction of my pencil so it's really up in the point. So from this angle to this angle. And I'm starting to kind of do a few little hairs in between. They work around the edge. Again, making sure to always follow that fur direction. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit with the blue into the brown. I think it's very dark just in this. We have a bit of a gap where the eyelid kind of turns into fur. A little bit of a gap with a brighter colour and then it gets very dark in there. Let's take our black. And we're going to start to go back along the waterline and drag that pigment, blending it in. So little strokes outward to the side. Coming up and over. Now I can take my black and start to fill in some of these bits there. Underneath, it's very dark under there. And drag your muffer. Let's take our bright white and we're just going to start to do some very light hairs over the top. And then you can see I'm alternating my direction as I do it. And then the hairs start to get really long around this part of the eye. And then they come up. Now I'm going to take my black actually and I'm going to start to fill in this section because otherwise it looks a bit strange. I'm going to take my eraser as well and I'm going to, again, I'm cutting the portrait a tiny bit in. So we're going to end it off early. <laughs> so I've just erased because I... I I don't want to work all the way out to here because then I feel like it looks a bit weird without doing the yellow on the outside. So I'm just going to cut the portrait in a little bit, pretend that it like cuts off just there. So I'm going to take my black and again I start kind of working out and away. More on a horizontal plane with the hairs in here. Let's go in with our dark blue. So the 760, same thing, just working on the outer edge. Just popping in my strokes. You can pop a few little ones up through the white if you want. Just blend it out a little bit. And through that orange, just a little bit. If you want to, you can grab a bit of yellow and just touch off the edge of that black. Only if you want to. Okay, let's go in with our, oops, 
because I've dropped my pencil. Cool blue gray, so the 724. And again, we're just gonna pick a few spots to kind of drag the pigment off and lighten up this black fur. Just give it a little bit of depth where the light's hitting into it. And we can take our blending stump and drag from the root out. And I'm going to come back in with my white and I'm just going to touch it a couple more of those hairs and then I'm going to come in with my orangey yellow and start to drag that into the black fur. Just again a few pieces and we'll take our sunshine yellow and same thing just drag in a few pieces before we take our blending stump and blend out that root. So I'm not blending out the whole piece, I'm just touching the root of the hair and then pulling it up towards the hair to blend it in a little bit better. If you want to go for your very light yellow, you can do that too. Same thing, you'll need to just go in with your blending stump nice and clean and pull in from the root. I'm going to go in my warm grey and I'm just touching up those blue hairs that I whacked in there. And I'm going to take my white again and try and just pop in a few of the hairs in between some of these darker areas just to add a bit more depth and then come up here. And I'll add in a little bit of yellow tone on this border here, just to blend it in a little bit better. Just go in with all your colors that you need. Maybe a little bit of brown, a few little specks of brown. I don't mind which brown you use. <laughs> Any will do, just a few. And then I can take my blending stump and again drag from light into dark, clean it off if you need, clean it, drag, clean it, drag. And then we take our white again and we just run some sparse hairs through that area. Just make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, we're so close to being done, guys. I'm just going to come down and work on this lower portion. If you need to, you can go in and touch up this upper border. I'm just going to take that credit color black and really kind of deepen that eye, that waterline. If you don't have that, that is totally not necessary and it's just a personal preference of mine to add that in. So I just really kind of deepen that a little bit. I love this pencil, it's wonderful. You can see how much of a difference that black can make. Just a real pop of color. Not much, just a little bit. Maybe one or two strokes through there. All right, let's start to work down this lower section. I'm going to come back and work from the left to the right because I want to try and avoid smudging my hand across my work. I know we've gone across this way, but because of the fact that this porch, like this little study is quite small, I've been able to hold my hand off the portrait and keep it the pencil long enough to attach, attack the other side. Um, whereas if I did this really big, I'd want to place a piece of glassine paper or I'd want to just systematically work like this way because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it would be the opposite way. 
So let's take our white. We're going to come down to this inner corner and we're going to start to pop in some of that highlight. So just following those strokes in my white pencil and dragging it down a little bit. And coming down and under the eye. Remember that hair transitions to a more horizontal plane along here. And coming in. Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my yellow, my sunshine, or my very light yellow, sorry, my 105. And I'm going to start to pop in a little bit in this inner section as it transitions. And then down into this orange as the white transitions into that. And we can add a few little sparse hairs in there. And around. Let's come up with our warm grey. So a 708, not our not this warm grey, but like this warm grey. And in just where the waterline starts to transition into that fur, we're going to start to pull in a few of the little hairs right on the border. So it's not quite as um, harsh. And then you can come out and do a, do a couple just um, sporadic ones off that waterline or that, um, yeah, it's a waterline. And then dragging a few through the eyebrow and again up in this upper corner of the white it's um, quite shadowed in there so we'll just pop a little bit in now we're going to go to this warm gray which is the 704 and on the lower portion portion of this white we're going to start to drag that warm color through there and then go over this section a little bit and again as it transitions into the orange fur. So I'm going to take my white, I'm going to be sneaky again and grab my Faber-Castell and I'm just going to again try to drag in a bit of that pigment, really light and across and as I work my way through this part, it's I'm, a, I'm putting a lot less white strokes through there. And we can do a little bit poking down. Uh, I'm going to grab my clean blending stump. I'm just going to do a sweep around there. <coughs> now let's start to fill in these black a little bit so we're going to take our black pencil and draw in some sporadic little furs over the top of the areas that we've put our black marks drag it out and around <coughs> you see how we cross the furs over with each other we don't want to keep them as a solid block I can see a few coming up there and then it gets a bit more dark towards this end. Let's grab our <clears throat> dark blue color and just lightly going over that again. And then I'm going to take my light grayish blue, <clears throat> so my 724, and just on this big portion, not on these smaller ones, maybe a couple down here, but on this upper edge, I'm going to start to drag a little bit of that lighter gray through just to give it a bit of depth, and then a couple on this. <clears throat> okay, we can take our black as black and pop in a few little streaks if you want to, not too much, just again using sparingly. <clears throat> now we're going to start to work through this brown or orange color. So I'm going to take my 625, so my warmish sort of gray, and start to just do some 
little fizz through there. I'm not filling up the whole area, I just want to kind of work in between some of that orange. Again, being mindful of the direction of fur, it's kind of going on this um, downward angle and turning horizontal. And then as we get to this outer corner, it starts to curve down again. I'm not worried about crossing over some of the black with my browns. I actually want that. I'm going to use this pencil to blend in with those blacks. And I start to transition that stroke to a downward curve. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my 280, so my or more orangey color. I'm just going to start to in the outer corner of this orange part here and just below the surface of this black. I'm adding a little bit more orange in there. Now we're going to transition into our 685, so more of a yellow tone, and pop in some of that pigment. Crossing over the colour when you need to, drag it over into your black. It gets very bright on this outer corner, so. I'm coming down. Just kind of, again, using this pencil to blend the base colours. Now let's come in with our sunshine yellow, so a 602. And we're going to start to work in, be a bit more dense because it's quite yellowy and light under here. So more more dense with my application. And just going in between where it's more orange and brown on this bottom edge, I don't really go in with my yellow too much. And then down here, I want to be a lot more dense with my yellow because it's very light on this edge. And same up here. Let's go in with our lightest yellow, so our 105. And same thing, just start to slowly work in some highlights into the fur. Going along the bottoms of where we see some of that black. And again, just along this bottom edge. And then I start to really get broad with my application here. My pencil strokes are very large and, and blending, if that's the best way I can explain it. And keep doing it. Keep going with your little strokes. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to take my blending stump, I'm going to clean it off, and I'm going to start to just follow really lightly over those areas that I just did. I don't really want to touch the black. I just want to work over the lighter yellow tones that I've popped in. Again, remember, coming from the root and dragging out So we're going to take our brown again, so our 625. There's a bit of brown popping in through the shadows under this outer corner where it's very light. And I'm just going to, again, start to go in between some of these areas of yellow with the brown and just keep adding depth and, um, yeah, depth basically. Just trying to add depth to my fur. I'm working around. I'm going to come in with my warm grey, so my one, sorry, my 704. And again, start to just work in a few being sparse round to go. 
And then I might actually take my 700 and right at the edges, nope, not the 700. Let's go in with our 110 and just try and brighten up the ends here. And then we're gonna come back in with our, our very pale yellow and try and go over the top. Grab that blending stamp and blend it out. So you can see where my hand's been rubbing <laughs> on the paper. We wanna avoid that normally. Now, something I like to do to finish off portraits that don't have, um, don't have, like, you know, they just kind of end like this is I take my blending stump and I really lightly just blend across the edge of the pigment and work my way around. So I kind of cross over the pigment only halfway and then the paper halfway and I'm just blending the edge and softening it to basically just say, hey, this is where this is this portrait's ending. So it just doesn't feel like it's so lost in space, if that makes sense. I want to just blur out the edge. So often if I did like a cat or dog portrait or something, I would want to blur out the edge of the neck. If it's like an ear, if it's a solid area that is finished, I don't blur it out. But if it was like the head and then it transitions down into the neck and it's the base of the neck and the next, the head's just kind of floating, I want to blur out that edge. So I just like to go around with my blending stump and just in circular motions, kind of blend that outer pigment. So now you can kind of see it looks like it's a bit softer and not just something floating in space. Um, again, I've really muddied up this outer edge with my hand. But yeah. Other than that, the last thing I do with my portrait is I just look at my portrait as a whole and I take my pencils and just go in and touch up anywhere I feel like I'm lacking or it needs a little bit extra. I just go in and do a few little things if I need to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the tiger's eye all done, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like my instruction and you like doing these types of drawings and you enjoy my art, um, so I would suggest you can sign up to my Patreon, which is a monthly subscription. I have two tiers at the moment, a low tier and a high tier. A low tier is where we do stuff like this study, and then the high tier is where we do full animal portraits. Um, so things like cats and dogs and stuff like that. Um, for example, we just did this cat in the high tier. Um, this is our May, well, this is the May tutorial that's coming up. Um, and then the lower tier is, yeah, just things like this eye. So if you want to follow along, it's um, just search Kimberly Russell Art. So Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y, um, Russell Art, and I'll come up. I also have uh, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. All my socials are the same handle, Kimberly Russell Art. Um, so, yeah, I'd really appreciate your uh, support. So if you want to join or just follow along um, or just see my posts and my art, uh, please do follow my socials and yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this free tutorial. Uh, enjoy. Thanks for watching.